This is why I want her here. Because if it's a threat to the chickens, say she can take care of it. But that is a dog on high alert. And I am loving watching her. Good evening, guys, and welcome back to the Wild Huckleberry. As you can see, it is getting to be getting closer to dark. Can you see the moon up there behind me? It's a pretty sky, a few clouds. Sun's already behind the clouds, so you can't really see it. But anyway, I'm out here, <clears throat> excuse me, to prepare to make the goats and cows and Thor happy this evening. Uh, they're just kind of gathered up. I'm surprised they're not talking to me more. They were just screaming at me. <laughs> but uh, as usual, my three boys here, they come up, they come up to see me. Nico and Butthead, named by one of the subscribers there. He came up with a good name for him because he keeps butting me every time I go in there. And then this pretty boy that I haven't named and don't know that I will because uh, he has a distinct purpose and it's not as a pet. But uh, everybody's kind of checking it out. But I keep thinking. Every time I come up here to this goat pen, I just keep thinking, one of these times I'm going to come up here and I'm going to have babies to show you. And as, as happens every single time, I got no babies to show you. Everybody's still running around looking very wide and very not having given birth. Uh, storm is getting pretty wide. Valkyrie's even starting to show pretty good now. Um... I mean, Bitey's looking pretty wide, but little girl, little girl, she is still so wide. It just drives me nuts. I just, I keep thinking she's going to have those babies. <sighs> I just, I mean, she won't quit. She's not, hadn't stopped eating, which tells me she's not uh, about to give birth. She's just, you know, when they, when usually when they're about to give birth, they do stop eating and they stop kind of, segregate themselves a little bit now but she's right in the middle and i feed her out of the bucket myself just a little bit because just to give her a little something extra and she eats right on up so uh, one of these days one of these days we're going to have babies uh, but uh, anyway i'm gonna get in here and feed this video um uh, we got a little uh Showing you how things are going with Sheldon being segregated. Uh, a big, big thank you to Roosties.co because uh, uh, I've got the, a way to give him food and water. And uh, he knocks the water over every now and then, but I mean, I'm not surprised that he does because he's just a big goofball. But uh, hanging that uh, uh, feeder from up above has been great he hadn't spilled it he hadn't knocked it over he knocked the lid off of it but that's all he did he couldn't really do anything else i'm just amazed at the amount of feathers that are in that uh coop with him and it's just coming from him so i, I mean i didn't i didn't know they lost feathers that bad just just being by themselves i thought figured it was the roosters that were causing that and this morning i went down and let the chickens out and one of my other three boys uh, has started crowing, so it's uh, official. He's definitely a rooster. I knew he was, but he started crowing. I'll try to get that on film uh, here soon. But uh, uh, the other two I haven't heard anything from. I knew I heard two different crows when we went down there, and I recognize Farkas, of course. I've heard him enough times. And I was like, mm, that's a different one. And sure enough, it was a different one. It, it's from the, the one that's kind of white or gray colored. <laughs> the boys are fighting over here. Uh, I saw Nico earlier today was uh, getting into it with Han. He, he needs to be careful because Han's getting some really nice horns on him. He sometimes just in walking past me, he nicks me with his horns just because they're sticking out so far now but uh <laughs> oh gosh these boys are so goofy 
they think they're something else but and butthead is living up to his name right now because he keeps jumping up and trying to butt heads with Nico but uh, anyway I'm gonna get in here and feed them I might show, show you a little bit and just just for those of you who are maybe new to the channel and all I'll do a little bit of introduction of names uh, of the ones that do have names and all and uh, we'll see uh, and I kind of give you a history on some of the some of the uh, goats too. The cows. The only history we have is we got them a few months ago, and uh, the night the night that we got them, they got out of the pen. They jumped the fence, four foot fence, and they just jumped it. They knocked it down just a little bit, but uh, they they jumped it, but good in two different places. But uh, they're better now. They're okay with staying in because they're getting fed. And they're happy and fat and sassy now so they're doing good and uh, but I'll introduce you to them I'll, but I'll introduce you to the to the goats and give you a little history of them so let me get the stuff together and uh, I'll see you in just a minute guys all right so here we go this is Nico named because he is half Nigerian half Kiko and this is his mama right here beside him you see how much bigger he is than her this is his mama storm she is one of my uh, Nigerians that we've had for a few years. Uh, I had three girls that were born one year and I sold or I traded their uh, their daddy off so I could keep the girls and Storm was one of those. It was Bitey's first baby that she had that was uh, solid black so I wanted to keep her. And as I was talking about Bitey, this is Bitey. This is my oldest uh, girl that I have. I've had her the longest. She was one of my original bunch. The only one of my original bunch that's left. And just so you know, that's Nat. That's Natasha. That's Natasha and Clint. Yes, Marvel. This is Butthead here. <laughs> Bill was nice enough to help me find a name for him. It works for me though. It works for him. This little boy doesn't have a name at this point, but that's his mama right there. That's uh, Leia. Leia is, by the way, is full Kiko. She's a commercial Kiko. And he is, he's full Kiko. And he's half, well, he's half and half. No, I take that back. He's full Nigerian. So this pretty boy here, his daddy is up here. By the way, this is a better look at Clint as he's eating some cubes. These are Dexters, by the way, so they are smaller uh, cows than your normal uh, Holsteins or any of those. Now this is Valkyrie, one of the three girls that I kept when I traded their daddy off. Um, the other one uh, has since passed on me. That is Han. You see how wide his horns are getting. That's Han. He is full commercial Kiko. And that's Ray. She is full commercial Kiko. And that's Ray's little girl there beside her who is full Kiko. Because that's her daddy. But uh, unfortunately I lost Ray's little boy uh, a couple weeks ago and then the only one that I haven't introduced you to is one that everybody should know by this point that has been around for any time and that is little girl now her mama came with Bitey and uh, her name was B and little girl here was one of the when we got when we got Bitey and B they were both pregnant Bitey had a boy, and B had a boy and a girl, and so we decided to keep the little girl when she was born, and that was little girl, and I just kept calling her my little girl, so she, the name stuck, and so she's little girl now, but she is definitely not little at this point in time. Look how wide she is, but she's, uh, she's kind of special, because she's not first generation, but she's second but uh, st 
storm there. You can see she's about to give birth again too. But I'm planning on banding my three boys, my three troublemakers, especially these two are the troublemakers, being Budhead and Nico. But anyway, that's my goats. And this right here, in case you don't know, is Thor. This is my, he heard his name. This is my livestock guardian dog that protects the goats, takes care of them. His name is Thor, and uh, we've had him since we've had goats. And he is a great LGD. He'll drive you nuts sometimes with some of the stuff he pulls, but he does a great job of protecting. Uh, he is always on guard, and he is an Anatolian shepherd. And uh, I wouldn't take anything for this big boy. Thought at first we might be getting rid of him because he was killing chickens. And then we just put him in with the goats to leave him when he was still kind of young. And the rest is history. He did great. So, we're not, I'm not mad that he ended up in with the goats and he did a great job. Thor, get out of the goat food. You had a whole bucket over there to yourself, boy. You goober. And for those who really don't know, that's Luna. She's going to be our chicken guardian dog. But uh, there we go. That's a little introduction to everybody. Oop, I'm leaving Thor's bowl in here. That's not a smart move on my part. I'm leaving this stuff up here. I don't like to leave it. I like to take it out with me. Hi, Leia, baby. Leia needs a little trim of her hooves, I would say, of one hoof for sure. And we don't have to see if this weekend we can't do a little something for her. There we go. Gate's locked up. I've got this kind of a gate system. Uh, when we first put this up, I showed this, but this is, oh, this is awesome. I love it so much because used to, I'd have to put the chain around and lock this, this right here holds, and it's great, and it's easy, and uh, I'm not mad I got it. All right, guys, so you hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Uh, just a little update on a couple things and a little prep that I'm doing for... Uh, uh, what do you call it? IT day? What do they call it? Anyway, <laughs> I said it. I'll say it later uh, what it's actually called, but uh, IT professional day. There you go. Because I am a programmer. I am in IT. So uh, I'm a high-tech redneck, I guess you might say. I'm a programmer and I'm a homesteader. So <laughs> I get, do a little bit of the of both. I, I get as, a little bit rural but I get uh, into programming and understand computers too. So anyway, hope you guys enjoy the video. You have a great one. Hey guys, so uh, tomorrow at work, we're going to celebrate IT Professionals Day. Uh, it was actually yesterday, uh, but we're celebrating it tomorrow at work. Um, the lady who set it up, my boss, she kind of set it up to... to so she could be there because she's been gone this week. Uh, she was out of town. Uh, so uh, we're going to have it tomorrow. And I'm making my famous sausage rolls. And I say famous because everybody likes them there. Uh, I have to take some to, for my family. My uh, wife and son insist that I leave some here. And my daughter most definitely insists that I bring some by her house. So I will show you what they look like before, uh, kind of where I start, and uh, show you the two ingredients that make these up. And uh, then I will uh, show you once I get them all cut up and ready to go in. Uh, I won't be able to show you the finished, finished product, but I will link a video in the description um, that shows you the whole process if you want to watch it. Uh, I, I make them around Christmas and such, and so this last Christmas, I actually videoed step-by-step step what I did and such, so I'll link that video in the description, and you can kind of see what it looks like. Uh, I'm going to step out here. My son is being kind of loud, so. Anyway, so here I am in the kitchen. This, I got these 
sausage or croissant uh, flats. I can hold on a second. I'm trying to remember what they're called, and I cannot remember what you call them. So let me grab one out of here real quick. This is what they are: crescent dough sheets. There you go. So you take that and roll it out. And the easiest way, my wife suggested this, and the easiest way I found is to take this paper, uh, this parchment paper, and put it on top and bottom. And then I just roll it out using this guy. And then this is what I put in it, is some sausage. And Jimmy Dean sage is my favorite. I think it makes the best one. So Walmart actually had some the other day, so I bought some. Uh, but I'm making these and I, like I said when I get done putting them all together and cutting them up I will show you the finished pro well the product the almost finished product before I cook them All right, and here is the finished product before cooking uh, You just have to slice the rolls Slice those long rolls that I make when I roll it up you slice them down and get them into this shape right here and these will be popped in the oven at 350 and they'll be cooked and they will be delectable Woo! <laughs> you hear my wife everybody here loves these things they're ready for them right now and when I said at work I was going to bring them everybody was happy uh, the only people that are not happy is anybody that's on a diet because I don't think sausage could be on a diet you know but Everybody at my work. <laughs> Everybody at Sonya's work likes them too. So, but, <laughs> but they don't get any because they're closed tomorrow. So sorry about that, guys. But anyway, just going to show you that. Like I said, I'll put a link to the other video that I did of these uh, back in around around December, November, December. I'll put a link to it so you, if you want to see how these are done, you can see the whole process. All right. A little update on Sheldon after day one of being put by himself <clears throat> he didn't eat a whole lot of food today but I saw him eating from the feeder he did knock his water over I'm not shocked but he did it at the end of the day so <clears throat> so it worked out good I refilled it so he's good he's got water he's uh, not happy being in here by himself He's been crowing all day. He sits on that roost a lot. I don't know if he'll ever even go up there and sit or not. We'll see. But uh, for now, he's still fine. He's doing okay. The house is right here. So in the mornings, it provides shade. <clears throat> and as the sun comes up, of course, the structure itself provides shade. And then later in the afternoon, he has a little bit of time where he doesn't have very much shade, but then not it's really not that bad. And it's not like it's 100 degrees right now. So he's, uh, he's doing all right. He's not happy about it. Look at those spurs that he has grown, will you? I'm uh, not fond of those and him being aggressive. So we'll see. We're just going to continue to keep him out here for now, and we'll figure out what we're going to do. Another quick update on Sheldon. The waterers, waterer and the feeder are working out great. He's knocked the water over a couple of times, but, I mean, he's a big boy, so of course he did. Um, but the they're working out great. I especially like having this one suspended right here, because he's not messing with it but he's obviously eating out of it of course he's got fresh grass that he can eat on too so he's doing good just refilled his water and uh, set it hopefully in a spot that'll be a little i've been setting it right here in this corner but setting it over here maybe is a little more out of his way so when he's running around in here he maybe won't knock it over but you know Sheldon he's Sheldon so he'll probably knock it over anyway but I uh, check on him several times during the day and he must have knocked it over last night because at no point yesterday did I ever see it laying down now of course he's not smart enough to have gone in there and laid down he's staying out here and this is his spot at night is in on this roost 
So, but he's a big boy. He's well feathered, so he's okay. And uh, these, the water and feeder from Roosties is working out really good. And so I'm so glad that I had him. I ain't sure exactly what I would have been able to do for him if not for having those. So that's a, a good, good deal. Let's see what Luna's doing. She smells something. She took off running down here. And I gotta go check out what she found. I'm scared at what it might be. Okay, I don't see anything really where she found. I don't see a thing down here. And the chickens have been coming down here and getting in the edge of the woods here. I, I mean, there's a creek just, that creek is just right out there. Here, let's see if I can. I love watching her with her nose to the ground though. That is some good stuff. That's where she differs from Thor a whole lot. And now she's growling. Anyway, right? Can't really see it that great through there, but you see that light? right back there see that light right there that's where the creek is it's not that far back there but there is a creek right back there which if you watch some previous episodes you'll see that it's uh flooded before and uh, come across As a matter of fact it's been all the way up shoot way up this far up but i'm just interested in this is what I got Luna here for. This kind of stuff right here. She smells something. She's interested. She is checking it out. This is why I want her here. Because if it's a threat to the chickens, say she can take care of it. But that is a dog on high alert. And I am loving watching her do what she's doing. I never see Thor running with his nose to the ground. Now she's back in the woods there. But Luna, I see running with her nose on the ground a lot. And I love it. It tells me her potential as my chicken guardian dog is great. And she can come down and check things out and clear it out for them. Make it safe for her charges. Can't really see her back there. She's smelling the stuff though. Anyway, I gotta go let the chickens out. And I feel better about it right now because she's on the job down here. And if there's anything down here that was thinking about messing with them, with her wandering through the woods, I don't think that it will be still around. I love that thought.